Hey, how's it going? I'm Rama from Rama Time, and welcome to Satisfactory. This is episode 10. Episode 10, right? I cannot believe I've actually done 10 of these now. In the last episode, we worked on this almighty beast of a building. And this is our fuel generator factory, which is made up of 33 fuel generators that are converting fuel that is being made elsewhere into power. And it is giving me a nice cool 7,000 megawatts or so. Out of these few refineries that are making me rubber and plastic as well, as well as some boxed fuel and yeah, some various bits and pieces that we needed. And I don't know what's going on with him. As long as he's happy, I think he thinks he's on a skateboard. I don't know. But since last time, I have made a few minor changes and some tweaks. You may remember there used to be a big ramp going over the top of this factory. Well, not anymore. It now goes round to the side and round the back. And I was looking at the way the coal is coming down. The tractor collects it, takes it all the way down to my factory, which is right over there. And then I remembered I'd already actually built a conveyor belt line that brings the coal from there all the way over there to my very cool little power generator plant here. So I thought I'll just take a feed off that and have it go into this transport hub and then we'll have our tractor just come and collect it from here. That was very nice of that tractor to avoid that big whale thing there. But anyway, so we're collecting it from here now. And that means my little tractor only has to go down this one small ramp to get down here to drop it off. So I'm getting coal down here much quicker now than I was before. Excellent. This in turn has improved the efficiency of my steel factory. Not by a massive amount, but by enough that it makes a difference. So now without further ado, let's get on with today's episode and make a plan for what it is we're going to do. Okay, the plan for today. Well, first of all, we're going to unlock a ton of stuff. We're going to unlock the gas mask. We're going to unlock the jetpack, the monorail technology, and the exosuit, which means we will be fully unlocked up to tier 6, meaning the next big thing to do will be space elevator parts. However, before we go too far ahead of ourselves, I want to make sure that we have certain things fully automated. So at the moment, I've got a bit of a makeshift thing for my frames and computers. So I've just got enough to be ticking over, but I want it to be unmanned and fully automated. Today, once I've unlocked everything, we're going to start building a heavy modular frames factory. After that will be a dedicated computer factory. After that will be the monorail system. Then we will go and find our main base place. <laughs> I already know where it's going to be. I've got the absolute perfect location to build the main base, but I want to get everything that I've already done kind of organized a bit first so that we can utilize what we've already done. But without further ado, let's start with gas mask. This one's easy. Oh, I need fabric. <laughs> Luckily, here's some I made earlier. Do do, do do, do do, do do, and kaboosh! My Milestone Achieved. Gas masks and filter parts will ensure increased odds of survival in gas-based hazardous environments. Fixit Incorporated would like to extend the friendly advice to not forget to change filters regularly. In my other playthrough that I did, I didn't use gas masks once. So it'd be interesting, I might have a try with them this time around and see what, how we get on. The next one will be jetpack, which we don't really need because I'm going to do this one. However, the jetpack does give us inventory slots, so that's really cool. I cannot wait to get this exosuit anyway, so we're going to select that one next. And we've now just got to wait 4 minutes and 16 seconds until we can do that. Oh yes, we're nearly there. Come on, that's it. Kaboosh! Oh, that'll be really quick. Okay, we need to go and get pipes now. Go, go, go! Really wish I'd centralised this already because that would have been so much easier rather than always keep running over here whenever I want to grab the stuff. It's coming back already! Way Easy there. <laughs> okay. There we go. Oh, I just didn't get enough. I seem to do that every single time. Right. Okay. Monorail. Go! That one. That one. That one. And that one. Kaboosh! Milestone reached. 
A new set of buildings and vehicles needed for long range. Fifteen minutes he's gonna be away. I'm glad I did that one last. So in addition to building let's have a look. power conduction, rails based transit ensures increased efficiency and reliability for both the transport of pioneers and cargo. So now under transportation, look, we now have our electric locomotive, a freight car, a train station, a platform, fluid freight platform, an empty platform and a railway. Yes, I can't wait to get this bit set up. Come with me, come with me. I have a thought. Come with me down the back end of our kind of factory area. Now we have this thing, which does look a bit messy, but I will tidy it up at some point. I know I say that all the time, but we have this where our deliveries are all made into our factory from the steel mill. Here's an interesting thing. If we head in this direction, there is a road that takes us almost all the way. Ow! There is a road that takes us almost all the way to where our new main factory is going to be. So I'm thinking that I might build the tracks going down to where our new base is going to be as well as running a hypertube down there so that we can easily get backwards and forwards because we're not going to have enough gear. Also, I realized I unlocked this. I didn't make one and start using it. I am crazy. So we could do jetpacks and we can do all sorts now. But the one I want is this. It's a mod to give me the exosuit. But I think it's OK because you have to work really hard for it. But it makes the game just an awful lot easier when you're building big structures. So. I'm going to create myself an exosuit and we're going to ditch these and plop, where is it? There it is, that in. Now the thing that we do need, whoa, look how much higher we can jump now. Oh yes, I forgot how good this is. Oh look, we're really fast as well. So the thing I do need though is a, uh, a tin of fuel. So I need some fuel, which is over at the refinery. It's a little bit of a trek, but actually, now that I'm moving so fast, it really isn't going to take me that long to get there. This is amazing. Check this out. I reckon I can do this now. Whoa. 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 Yes. <laughs> I can finally navigate properly. Oh, why has it been so long since I unlocked this? Look at me go. I don't want to use up all my fuel before I get there, though, because I haven't got that much, but I've only got to get to there. There we go. Look. Oh look, it's like the old days again. Sorry, I'm getting really excited because this is how I normally play. Ah, there we go. And we can grab one of these. We'll grab two actually because we're probably going to do a lot of flying. And there we go. We can now fly around until our heart is content. And we can easily get up to places like this without having to build container units and stuff. Oh, oh, fantastic. Oh, so I totally forgot. I haven't really been unlocking these things in the man for a while. And there was this one, the crystal oscillators. We'll unlock these. And look, look at that. A map. Oh, but I need 10 more crystal oscillators and 10 beacons. All right, hang on. So this, at some point, obviously, I will fully automate so that I haven't got to sit here and hold down the space bar. But for now, we can at least knock some of these out so that we can unlock the map because that will make it an awful lot easier for me to figure out where I am and where I want to go. Right, that is, okay, that is enough of everything I need, I believe. So, oh yes, and we can also unlock the Explorer now. That's going to be fun, actually. I've never even driven that. Right, anyway, the map takes five minutes, but let's get it going. It's scanning that little crystal oscillator thing. Cool. Okay, so rather than having my map, which is done. Oh, Excellent. Well, now that I have a map, I can actually find out where it is I want to go to. And here, if we press Z, we can see my map and we can see all my little trucks moving around and everything. Oh, that's quite cool. But I did take a quick run over there because, as I say, there is basically a path that goes all the way or a road that goes all the way down here, down here and up to here. This area here is where the new factory is going to be because there is a wealth of wonderful resources around there and it's a very pretty area. And just up around this area over here is where I'm going to build my modular frames factory. <laughs> it might actually be a modular frames and computers factory actually though because yeah, it might just make more sense to do it like that. But we'll see, we'll see. Anyway, let's start making our way over there and trying to get trains trains no let's we're going to try and get some train tracks and some other bits and pieces over there now i need to make sure i bring power ideally neatly well, now a lot of people like to build their railways like up on um, big tall uh, gantries and so on 
Whereas I actually really like seeing a, a railway that is all running across the floor. I mean, if you come to a, a big chasm, then fine. But I like going through all like, the bushes and stuff. I think the, if you start weaving, it looks pretty groovy. This is the area. I don't know what's going on here, but we've got some weird floaty bees. So yeah, so this is going to be the area where I am going to build my modular frames factory. Because we have just down there, we have two coal nodes. And then just up here, we have a pure iron node. And then somewhere just over this way, we have a pure limestone node. Yeah, it's somewhere just over there. There's a pure limestone node. So I can run, I can make a run from over there over into my new building. See, the lovely thing about this area, this is where I'm going to build my main base. It's going to be all over this water, but high enough that I can have water extractors. But there's all that space over there with loads of water. So water's not really a big problem. And we've got a ton of great resources. We've got limestone, we've got copper, we've got iron. There's quartz over there. There's caterium somewhere just over there. And yeah, there's a load of really, really lovely goodness. So I think I'm going to build, yeah, this is going to be the base for my factory. Uh, well, for my computers and frames factory. Okay, I haven't got any. I thought I did. I have no bacons. Bacons? I was going to put a beacon down. I'm going to start building me hypertubes back to the main base because of the fact that as soon as I start building stuff, I will start running out. Actually, I'm saying that. Oh, gold. Hang on. Oh, look. There's more bees to take care of. Yeah. I'm going to build it up the top here. That is where I'm going to build it. Yep. So what we need to do is clear a load of stuff up here. Okay, and we don't bother with that chainsaw stuff anymore. Not too bad, not too bad. Let's build our foundation. Right. That's our central point. We're going to build out from there. It's definitely going to overhang this ridge because we're going to need a fair amount of space inside this building. But I quite like that idea that it creates the tunnel underneath it. So, yep, we'll do that. So I'm just going to plot it out. Well, I've now got a ton of work to do. I'm just going to claim back some of this concrete because I'm now going to start building my hypertube back to the main thing because I've already run out of concrete. And I don't want to have to just constantly come backwards and forwards, so I've got to at least make it a bit quicker. Well, that's the platform built and ready. This will be my factory for modular frames, heavy modular frames, and computers. And if you look over this way, that is our train track, and we have our hyper tube TM. And I will let's yeah, let's go for a quick ride before we get on. Wee. I haven't actually tried it yet, so this is my first ride in the Hypertube along this route. It's kind of cool, actually. See, on the on my old map, I actually set up some areas inside of the Hypertube where you came you came out and went back in again. So you'd hit some entrances, and what that would do is give you a nice boost to make you go really really fast. And I might add one in the middle of this. I might not, I don't know. I think a lot of this way is actually uphill, so yeah, it probably wouldn't do me any harm to have a couple of boost zones. Because I don't think at the moment I'm going to be looking to stop anywhere on the way, although I do want to stop there. Look, there's a... Ah, man, I want to go and see what's in there. But I'm going already. Never mind. <laughs> oh, I went past that like three times building this. But anyway, so now we're in the slow bit. But, ah, here we go. We're going back downhill again, so maybe we'll go a little bit quicker again. Are we going back? Are we going down? I don't know what we're doing. It's very chilled out. <laughs> very chilled out indeed. I'd say the way back there is probably going to be a lot quicker. But I'm sure we're going to have plenty of time to find out. Might need to clear those trees. I don't like the way it goes through them. Oh, same with that bush there. And we're here. <laughs> oh, 
Wonderful. Right. Okay. Well, a ton of work to do now. I don't know what these two are doing. Look, look at these two. What are you doing? Behave. Uh, loads to do. Collect up some more materials. Head back there and start building stuff. I need to go set up a load of miners. Yeah. Mm, definitely. A few moments later. Right, checkity, checkity, checkity. Here we go. So what we have is, thank you, Mr. Bean. Wee. So down here we have our coal, and these are both maxed out with power shards, which means that they will now push 300 uh, parts per minute. So that means we've got 600 coming up through these two lines here. Well, that was a bit silly. Why did you go and stand there? And if we go up the top, we'll come to the next bit so we go along here and then this joins over here to this one which is a pure iron node so here we have a total of 480 so that's an entirely full mark 4 belt coming out and going up here and we'll go up my new step they're not really steps are they no I know uh, this ramps but we call them stairs whatever it's a fire escape which goes up the side here it looks really cool uh, this is a good start. Gives us an absolutely beautiful view over where our big base will be. And that comes here. Everything kind of gets a bit organized and goes up the top here. Ready for use. Ignore these machines. These are for my calculations, which I'm still trying to work out. It's really tricky. And now let's quickly have a look over this way. Just over there is a copper and a limestone node. I've just spotted this slug, so I'm going to take it. Thank you. And these guys here, I have run on belts all the way from over here. And I've left room for one more thing. If I find something, now there's a quartz node around here somewhere, but I cannot for the life of me find it. I think it's inside of this rock, but I'm not sure. But if I wanted to bring something else up this way, there is a bit of room. So it might be that as there's some iron just over there, I might bring in one 480 line of iron to join this lot and then that way I've got a total of 940 no what's my maths all about wait a minute hang on I need to have a think here oh we can just do this can't we this is a really rubbish uh, thing to do 960 yeah I should have known that. we've basically got 960 of iron coming in we've got 600 of coal coming in and then there's this uh, 300 of copper. Not sure if I will use the copper or not, but it's nice to have it there. So if we've got that, then basically, according to my very rough, quick calculations, we can set up like 16 smelters for the iron times two, so 32 smelters, then uh, 12 foundries to deal with all the steel ingots, and then I can do 16 constructors to turn into 320 steel pipe per minute, which will then in turn turn that into 45 encased beans per minute, which is more efficient. <laughs> and that will give me somewhere in the region of a number of heavy modular frames per minute. This is a really complex project. This is, I mean, I know it's not oil and all of that, but this is actually getting really tricky to figure out exactly what I want to do. Oh, my flashlight's on. There we go. Anyway, so the next bit is going to be to sample the smelting so that I can start just getting a load of ingots out of all of these ores. Let's do that next. Well, holy wowzers. <laughs> and it's still not there yet. <laughs> this is crazy. Um... So, just to show you kind of what I've got going on, my feeds are already, nothing is connected yet. I've not even run power yet because I've spent so long just trying to get everything organized. So we have our sets of smelters, which is basically doing our iron processing, absolutely bog standard normal stuff. Then over the back here, we have 15 foundries, which is all converting the iron into um, steel ingots. And we've got the, again, we've got this pretty kind of standard thing, although I've got two separate runs coming in because my belts can't handle more than 480 at the moment. And I want it to be running at capacity if I can help it. So I've split those into two sections. Ow. There's like a one little cheeky machine over here with a crazy setup to get the some steel uh, bars. No, what is it called? Steel beams into these two constructors here which is going to make an absolute ton of screws which all goes into these two which then make the reinforced plates which is being fed from these which is the leftover iron this is so confusing right 
and up there that is my concrete factory so all of that is just dealing with the concrete and in theory should make a fair amount of concrete out of that and then the idea is that everything once it's ready will be fed into my big four constructors constructors manufacturers here out on the main floor so yeah basically everything will get made and then come and get fed in here I've got to build a big old manifold system to get it all in there and the building I'm not doing any decoration on it yet I've done obviously a few little tests but exactly how the final building layout will be is still something I'm working on once I get to the end of figuring out exactly what I've got to build then we'll look at that but I think I've had a bit of a change of heart and this will be purely for these heavy frames and it'll have a train station that comes along and it picks up from over there yeah but for now we're getting there we're getting there it's just taking forever man there's so much to do oh anyway back to it well it's coming along nicely I just wanted to show you a little something that I'm doing here with my manufacturers so this is the manifold system in which I'm going to use and I was just going to quickly show you how to set this up it's quite straightforward, but basically we just have to line this up. So I'm going to come this side so that I can be sure I'm definitely in line. There we go. And make sure that it is in line from the side there. That's it. Then we do the same again, but we make a stack. And now the direction doesn't matter on the lower ones. It only matters on the top one. So we'll just make sure we spin that around on the top one to make sure the direction is all the same. Then holding control after pressing F, I will get rid of those. Then I will add my aesthetic posts, purely because I don't like these to just float. I like them to at least look like they're being held up by something. And then we connect each one in like so. And I actually think that looks pretty groovy. I kind of like the way it's got that swirly effect as it goes off into the distance. So that's cool. Then I will finally just link all of these through. So from there to there, from there to there, from there to there. And we'll do it with all of them. Now you would do this last one like this if you were planning on expanding. There you go, that's pretty tidy. And now all I need to do is feed all of the output of all the machines into the ends here. And we are ready to go. Well, this has been my biggest mission yet. Check that out. <laughs> it still needs tidying, but the functionality, I'm pretty sure, is done. So we have our feeds coming from down there, as well as over there, all running into this single heavy modular frames factory, which should, when running at capacity, produce around about eight heavy frames per minute which doesn't seem like that much, but considering how much has gone on in, in here, I think that's the best we're gonna do for the time being at least. Now you see, the thing is, I don't even know if this is actually gonna work yet. I'm pretty sure I've gone around and I've set everything up and I have belted everything. And while it does look a little bit spaghetti, <laughs> it is actually quite well organized. I think I'll really struggle to explain everything, but all that is left to do is connect up all of the inputs and turn the power on. So that is the coal now going off into the system. I have messed this up slightly. I don't know how I've done that, but we will just stick one of these in something like this and connect that there, which will then start putting the iron into the system. Excellent, okay. And then we have a similar situation over this side, through this door, that's right, where we have to connect up here Boom. I'm bringing this copper in and I'm not even using it. And then this is our, what do you call this stuff? Limestone for our concrete, which goes up here to our concrete factory up the top here. So that's those all full up or filling up. And we can see down there, that's filling up rather nicely. Oh man, if this doesn't work. So obviously we saw this already, how this all works. The factory is made into sections that provide the four items for these so over here on the ground floor we have steel processing and then on the upper floors we have the steel pipes which will all come out across these belts here and then be fed into these 
assemblers which will then turn those into encased beams with the exception of some that kind of go off to other places around the factory. This is my balancing tower. I kind of thought it would be fun to have a really tall point in the factory and that feeds out to the important areas uh, like over there. We'll just go and have a quick look over this bit because this bit's kind of cool. So this area here produces the reinforced plates and again it's kind of it's a little bit spaghetti but whoops but I just think it looks actually pretty cool. And once everything's sort of moving around and everything's flying about, I think this is gonna look really smart. But now it's time to just power it on and see if it does actually work. I have just noticed I've not put anywhere for these to feed to. So right now I'm gonna make a very temporary setup and I'm gonna have it coming out on a Mark I conveyor belt just because I think it looked quite cool. I'm actually going to send this off. When I've done the design for the the whole building, you know, filled in all the walls and done it how I actually want to do it, I'll have these so they actually travel about the factory a bit first before they get delivered, just because I kind of like doing that. So, you know, like a bit of a victory lap. So, anyway, enough waffle. We need to figure out how we're getting power into here. So let's just quickly... So this is our power in, and the way I'm going to do this, again, I'm going to tweak this and fix this up so it's a little bit more clever, but let's just line that up there. Okay, and then I'm going to have a three on the outside, so a three, <laughs> a single one on the outside. So the idea is that that connects into the power, that connects into our factory and then that is now our circuit breaker so basically the moment i turn that on everything's going to kick in and i'm actually really nervous now we've got a ton of power because where this has taken me so long my entire factory is buffed out so it's full so pretty much nothing's running really at the moment apart from stuff that's going into sinks a pivotal moment and i'm a little bit nervous but let's try ready here we go oh <gasps> it's come to life I hope I haven't forgotten anything, so that's cool. All right, so they're all going over there. Which are going into this system here. We should also see in the background, we should start seeing stuff coming in from the other side as well. Oh yes. That's it, we've got coal. We, we are making steel. There's a, oh, there's a ton of steel coming out. There's a ton of steel going up, which will be going up there, which means any minute we should start seeing these uh, there they go there they go now hey, there's our first ones so there are first few copper tubes we have cement coming in I don't know why I just called them copper tubes they're steel tubes steel pipes something like that but yes there we go so these belts will should all start getting quite busy obviously everything or well, pretty much everything here is done by overflow so it will definitely it will take a little while for the system to get fully up and running now the one thing that is worrying me is that I'm not seeing any encased beams yet and I'm not seeing any metal frames frames are supposed to be coming from up here now it's doing something let's just have a quick look yeah there, there goes oh there goes one Ah, right, okay, so that's one. So yeah, again, this is just, just a case of it's gonna take ages for it to get up and running. And we need eight modular frames, so why am I not seeing the modular frames yet? That has got me worried. So from over here, ah, this this could be to do with this. Well, mind you know, they're making an awful lot of screws, so we've got a lot of screws going in there. Yeah, we're getting those. So we're getting some steel plates going up. Oh dear. Come on, make it. I'm not seeing a lot happening up here, though. This is where we're making the metal frames. No power. Ah, what? Okay, I forgot to connect this one. It's just a case that it needs to fill up. That is all it is. So at some point, we should start seeing heavy, uh, metal frames coming across that belt there. And there they go. There's our first three. Woohoo! <laughs> And they will go all the way across there. They will run all the way across that part of the factory. They'll go across that little bridge there, disappear off into the system, but then they will come out and slide in. Oh, 
there. Brilliant, there we go. We have one of everything coming in. So while the system fills up, it will definitely take a little while to get it fully running, but wow, okay, brilliant. So we're eight modular frames away from our first heavy modular frame. But like I say, this is the stuff I love. I love when stuff is all moving around like this. Like, look at the way these screws are whizzing off into this system. Oh, still waiting. Come on. I've done that wonkily. Oh. All right, might have to just fix that quick. And our first manufacturer has just kicked in and started whirring away. And I would like to present the first three <laughs> heavy modular frames that have been made in this here factory. Isn't that a sight to behold? <laughs> to be fair, I know that doesn't actually seem like all that big a deal, but I've spent so long working on this thing I'm so glad that it's actually now making something. <laughs> Even if it's slow right now, I don't care. I love it. But all my manufacturers are now running. And here comes some more. So we are going to have... Yeah, we're doing really well here, actually. I'm super, super pleased with this. <laughs> well, whatever, anyway. It's now done and working. Left for me to do is still just the cosmetic stuff. So now that it's running, I'll just go around and put in all the walls and make it kind of look interesting. I'll give the building an interesting shape and a layout that looks kind of cool. I've got to do a ton of walkways because I kind of want all the areas that are to be accessible via walking. It's one of the things I've always kind of tried to do in my factories is always provide a way to walk around them sort of without any jetpacks or anything like that. So you can actually just run around the factory and have a look inside. But again, this is just so pretty. I just love the way everything's all moving around and you see all the stuff like this. It's just great. And I love all the detail and the intricacies. You've got to admit, this game does look absolutely fantastic. And in theory, once this is fully running, all these pipes, there'll be just hundreds of pipes flying through there. Oh, it's just going to look absolutely fantastic. Oh, I love it so much. Anyway, that is quite enough for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please remember to hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. And pressing that little bell will give you all the notifications of whenever I do get around to putting up a new video. But for now, all that is left for me to do is say thanks very much again for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye!